Today's reading is from Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16, which is on page 617 in the Church Bibles or on the screen. (coughs) How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Thank you, Joe, for, for, for reading for us. We continue our series, if you're here visiting in the, this morning, we've been looking over, over the summer at what it looks like to grow uh, as, a, a, as a Christian. And so today we're very much, just as we've sung, we're looking at the scriptures, reading the scriptures. It's um, uh, what we, the, the bread and butter, really, of, of being, being a Christian. We're going to examine that a little bit more, and we'll uh, have Psalm 119 to help us. Can I just... Uh, recommend a book uh, if you haven't been on your holidays yet uh, a little bit of holiday reading perhaps um, habits of grace this is excellent it's not just on scripture it's on looking at forming the healthy habits of living uh, as a as a christian uh, really really very helpful um, stuff in there very well explained s- sort of going through why we do it why we do what we do how to live as a christian and then some really helpful practical pointers um, of how to do that so habits of grace uh, growing in, in Christ. Um, speak to me afterwards if you're, you're interested and you've forgotten my name, but, but that, that's there. I highly recommend. Uh, well, we've just read, I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your words. So let's pray uh, as we start with this morning. Father, we do indeed pray along with the psalmist that we would delight in your decrees, that we would not neglect your word. Help us to hear you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. In uh, 1933, so shortly after, shortly after Hitler became a uh, German chancellor, the first national convention of German Christians, that's what they call themselves, the German Christians Um, movement well it gathered together and its slogan at the time it's one of those there's many stories isn't there from from this the second world war it's probably one most of you in here haven't haven't really thought anything about its slogan for the church was the state of adolf hitler appeals to the church and the church has to hear his call and so shortly after that, that after that convention the national synod that's all the leaders of the protestant churches in germany well shortly after they endorsed the nazi party and they unified into a new organization and that organization was called the german evangelical church so that's what the german evangelical church called themselves and indeed signed up to later that year uh, there's a german pastor dr reinhold kraus and he delivered a speech and to a gathering of there's 20,000 um, people, 20,000 um, from, the, from, from the spread around Germany, they came together, it was broadcast on national radio, and it was encouraging the church. What did Dr. Uh, Krauss say? Well, he said, the Old Testament, let's get rid of it. We don't need any of that. We don't need, need any of the, 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 the Jewish aspect of what we believe, the Jew, with its Jewish morality. Let's get rid of the Old Testament And he also said, let's make significant changes to the New Testament as well. Let's get rid of all the superstitious stuff, as he said. Let's get rid of all of that stuff and just keep really what we want to keep. It was as low a time as you can imagine for Christianity in in, in Germany. And the root of it all came from their attitude to the Bible. The church capitulated to the state. 
It sought to twist and change the words of scriptures and outright delete the scriptures. So the Bible, it didn't fit with the ideology of the day that they wanted to live by, like so many wanted to live by. I know it wasn't, wasn't everybody, but so many wanted to live by. And so they chose to reject what God had to say. They very simply did what humans do very well. The human creed, creatures know best. Forget the creator. Forget any idea of God. We know what's best. We know what's right and good for us. Well, in response to that, a group of theologians, church pastors uh, and leaders, well, they courageously, very courageously, they stood up against this national church and state. And it was led by a theologian called Bart, and they met in the city of Barman in, in May 1934. And they wrote a very important new document, probably one that most of you have never heard of. It's called the Barman Declaration. They met in the city of, uh, of Barman, and the Barman Declaration was a key document in rallying Christians to stand firm in God's word, to resist any and every temptation to move away from it. And the authors, well, they declared six declarations, all centered around the lordship of Christ and the necessity of scripture to know him. We can only know Christ through the scriptures that God has given us. And this is the first one. I'm not going to do all six, but this is, this is the first one. Let me read it. Jesus Christ, as he has attested for us in Holy Scripture, is the one word of God which we have to hear and which we have to trust and obey in life and in death. And they continued. We reject the false doctrine that the church could and should recognize as a source of its proclamation beyond and beside the word of God. Yet other events, power, historic figures and truths as God's revelation. In other words, we, don't, we reject that the idea that anyone else knows what's good for us, who God is. No one can explain that other than in the holy scriptures that God has given. Jesus Christ is how one knows God, their maker. And the Bible is how we know Jesus Christ. Whatever anyone else says around us, even if all the other people around us, if all the authorities around us tell us something different, well, you should not. You should not listen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Scripture is how we know Jesus Christ. And 90 years on, or so, 90 years on from the, the, the Barman Declaration, well, it's a different era, where we ourselves in a, in a very different culture, a different context, different pressures, but the same message is true. Jesus Christ is Lord, and the scriptures that we've got so many of, as you walk in, so many of these red Bibles, we walk past every Sunday morning, the scriptures, the Bible is how we know Jesus Christ. Well, as I've said, over the last few weeks, we've, we've been taking stock of our Christian life. What do we need to do? What do how do we change our, our mindset, our, our actions to grow as Christians? And well, these courageous Barman theologians give us the answer, we must never stray from God's word. And that's what our text this morning, it was written many, many years uh, before the Barman Declaration, Psalm 119. Well, that's what it says. Verse 16, I will not neglect your word. I will not neglect your word. You see, the psalmist knew what the scriptures were. He knew how important it was for, for his life. Now, today's message is entitled, Take Your Vitamins. Uh, so why, why is it important to get your five a day or your, your, your seven a day as a, uh, as a habit? Well, because it stays off illness. Doesn't it? it keeps us healthy for longer and it's the same for maintaining the habit of of reading the bible what does the young man of psalm 119 do with it well verse 10 tells us if you haven't got your bibles open please do this would be as good a time as ever um, to, to open it up it's on page 616 in, in those red bibles well what does the young man of psalm 100 the young man of psalm 119 do verse 10 he seeks after god with his whole heart 
not just a little bit of him, his whole heart, everything about him, he seeks after God. Verse 11, he stores it up, he treasures it in his heart. He's desperate to know more about God. He knows that the only way to live well in this world today, this afternoon, the only way to live well is to live under the instruction of his maker. So how do you know how to live well? Well, you listen to the one who made everything. It's not complicated, is it? How do you know how to love? Well, you hear the one who made you to love, the one who is love. How do you know how to make a good decision? Well, you pay attention to the one who is morally perfect. If you pay attention to him, well, you're, you're not going to stray very far in terms of how you make your decisions. I see the psalmist here, well, he's, uh, as you say, in Northern, Northern Ireland, he's no goat's toe, is he? He, he gets it uh, better than, than most. It's not complicated. God made us, and therefore, if we ignore him, well, we'll make a real mess of our lives, very simply. People do that to different levels, but we generally will make a, a mess of our, our, our lives if we don't know and don't want to know the one who made us if we ignore God. And worse than that, we deprive ourselves of knowing the one who cares about us the most. No one else wants and wills us to do better, to flourish more than the God who made us. And so the psalmist, he eats up every word his Lord has to say. He goes through and he memorizes and he ponders every, every law over and over in his, in his head. Uh, when, when the wealthy lie in their, their, their swimming pools, uh, feeling pleased about how, how all, of, all that they have, or the lottery winner, you know those pictures of the, the champagne um, uh, opening up with the, with the giant check. Well, they're very pleased in their situation. Well, this young man, he rejoices more than any of them ever could. He rejoices because he knows God. And he hears what God says. So forget the Ferraris and the, the private jets. I know about the God who owns it all. I know him. I know him personally. He knows me. And he thinks it through carefully. And he looks at what it means for him. He looks at how it applies. He thinks of what it means. For, he thinks of what it means for one to know those precepts. And what difference it can make to a weary soul. I rejoice, he says. I meditate. I delight. God's word is everything. And so we're going to look at just a little bit of um, application this morning. We're going to look at this through vitamins um, as, as it happens. So I'm going to go through some of the, um, the, the most common vitamins uh, uh, to help us with this. So first of all, vitamin K. Vitamin K is keep going. Okay, verse 10, do not let me stray. Well, there'll be some who are, are struggling in the faith this morning. There'll be some here this morning, I know, who will be struggling, perhaps wondering where God is. Where is God in those hard times that come? Maybe questioning, well, what is God really like? Well, the scriptures tell us, come back to him. Don't walk away. Don't close your eyes. Don't close your ears to him. Come back afresh to his word. You see, he has given us all we need here. He hasn't given us all that we could possibly know about him. He's too big for that. But he gives us all that we need to know him well. And so we, we can't exhaust the scriptures and before we die. And so the more we delve into them, we will never run out of things we learn about who he is in the scriptures. But we will spend all eternity getting to know him more if you follow him. And so there's a, there's a great moment in um, Old Testament history. It, it's, it's found in one Chron one Chronicles, if you want to look it up later, you don't need to do it now, 1 Chronicles 28. There's a great moment where King David, so Israel really in the Old Testament, Israel's greatest king, just before he dies, he speaks to his successor, his, his son Solomon, before all the people. So they, they bring in all of the people uh, of Israel before him, and he gives Solomon some instructions, the instructions Solomon needs in order for the, the nation of Israel to thrive, to do well. 
for Solomon to lead well, for Solomon to lead them as a successful king and for Israel to be successful. Well, what does David tell Solomon? Well, you, you can imagine the scene, it's set. You can imagine everyone, the throngs, the crowds, and before him, his eyes intensely fixed on his boy. And he says this, my son, my son, serve the Lord with wholehearted, wholehearted devotion. Seek him and you will find him. Serve the Lord with wholehearted devotion. Seek him and you will find him. He says a lot more. It's worth reading. It's a great chapter, 1 Chronicles chapter 28. God doesn't play hide and seek. He, 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 he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't toy with us. Some of us think that. Sometimes I think we can't find God. He doesn't do that. He wants us to know him. He wants us to trust him. So if you've dropped out of doing it, which, which I would guess probably quite a few um, have, we often go through that in, in, in phases of our life where we drop out those habits of reading the scriptures. Well, pick up the Bible this afternoon, this evening, tomorrow morning and get to know the heavenly father once again i've had it said to me on many occasions by those new to the christian faith i don't know very much chris i don't know very much i'm i'm, I'm just a beginner and there are some who are stuck saying that i remember a particular chap who said that for years he just kept on coming back and saying i'm uh, saying I'm, I'm a beginner i don't i don't know very much well, what's the best advice for someone like that? Dive in. Get to know your saviour in the Bible. And, and do speak to me afterwards if, if you'd like some direction and with that and how to get, get started. Um, I'd, I'd love to have that sort of conversation afterwards. There's many places I could point you, point you to, but get to know him. It's a relationship. It's not a homework where you tick the box and you say, I, I, I've done it. No, it's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to know him. And so that's the, the healthiest habit we can do is indeed to be reading scripture. So that's vitamin K. Keep going. If you've stopped, keep going. If you haven't started yet, start. That's vitamin K. Vitamin B. Well, vitamin B is the breath. There's lots of vitamin Bs, I think. Isn't that right? There's, 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 there's vitamin B is a bit more complicated one. And there's, there's lots of ones that fill out. Well, the breath with my lips, the psalmist says, with my lips, I recount all the laws that come from your mouth all of the laws the breath of god's law there are different ways we should should read the bible but we must make sure that we're reading it for pleasure christian joy we're often better at saying that aren't we we're often saying christians should have joy i think sometimes we're slower to say christians enjoy same thing really isn't it but christians must enjoy god we must enjoy god's word so read large chunks Read large passages in one sitting. Spend a, sa a Sunday afternoon sitting in the sun with your, your drink of choice and read a whole book of the Bible. Enjoy him. Enjoy what he has to say. The selections of writings we have are mesmerizing in scriptures. It's all there for our good. It shows us how to be better friends. It teaches us the richness of intimacy. It reveals true morality, ethics, it has the most gripping of narratives, the stories of, of human frailty that we can all relate to. Enjoy getting to know God better, understanding the world better as we understand God better, understanding yourself better as you read it. So that's vitamin B, breath. Vitamin D, death. Psalmist says in verse 15, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. So yes, of course, we absolutely should read with breath, but we should also read with depth. Spending time dwelling on small amounts of the Bible, dwell on one simple truth the whole day. Just read one verse, one simple truth, and then think about it over and over. Keep coming back to it, your lunch break or driving back from the school run, or, or, or on the train, whatever it is, the train back from, from work. Think about it. Bring it to mind. Ponder it. What does it mean? And so some of you may think, well, that's, that's not really me. I'm not, not really a man. I, I like the idea of, of the breath, reading the stories, the exciting stories. I'm not really a, a, a deep thinker. I'm not a meditator. But in fact, we are all 
Meditators, if you know how to worry, well, you know how to meditate, very simply. What is worry? Worry is going over the same thing from every different angle you can think of. Well, that's meditation. Very simply, it's thinking about one truth and going over it from different angles to digest it. Meditation, very simply, relaying over the idea over and over. So take a short passage, ask lots of questions about it. Why is it there? Why did the eternal God of perfect knowledge choose these words? Why did he decide these words were so important for me to hear? Why did he see it as so important to guard it through thousands of years now? Where many people have tried to destroy the Bible. Well, why has God guarded these words? He obviously thinks they're very important. I need to hear them. What can this mean for my life? Lots of questions. How should I respond to these words? How can I love more because I know them? How can it change me? How can it strengthen my hope? How can it comfort me when I feel depressed? Ponder the words as if someone extraordinarily special and with eternal universal significance said them, recorded them for you to chew on. So that's, uh, that's uh, meditation. Vitamin D, the depth. Vitamin C, well, commit them to memory. This is very much connected to meditation. Psalmist again says, verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart. So dwell on a text, learn it, plant it deep in your heart. As you learn scripture, scripture, often we, I think, get intimidated by the idea of, of learning scripture because we think, well, it would be good to do for a rainy day, perhaps in the future, perhaps uh, when I go through a real period of suffering in the future, well then, that's the moment when I, hit, when I, when I go to a hospital uh, appointment and somebody says something I really don't want to hear, that's when I, when I take this verse. Um, out of my mind. I've, I've remembered it and I'm ready. It doesn't work like that, does it? When we think, well, we don't, we don't memorize scripture if, if, we, if we really believe that's what it's about. Why do we memorize scripture? Well, yes, of course it can help us in the future, but it's for today. We learn scripture for today. To hide it deep in our hearts, to ponder those simple truths and increasingly have the mind of Christ. The more you know scripture, the more you will know Christ. You will know his mind. You'll be in, his ways will be imprinted on your mind, on your, on your heart, his truth, what he's about. And that's what we want, on your mind, on your heart, and then you grow to be more like him. Commit to memory. There's lots of ways to do that. Again, speak to me. There's, 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 there's many different systems and ways um, of doing it. Very simply, it's just pick up your favorite verses and, uh, and, and read over them and, uh, and learn them. That's vitamin C. We're nearly there with the vitamins. Vitamin A, action. Or you could say application. Vitamin A, action. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? That's what the psalmist says, by living according to your word. In verse 9, note it doesn't men mention passing theological exams or earning doctorates. One stays on the path of purity. How? But well, they live out God's word. They live according to to God's word. We're to be doers, not just hearers. We are to be doers. When one grows in their understanding of who Jesus is, their commitment to follow him increases. Their appreciation for him will deepen so that they respond in action. So reading the scriptures with a searching heart will always lead to a shift in mindset. And a shift in mindset, well, when we change our thinking, well, that leads to response and so it has real-time impact on our lives so one tempted to sin today one tempted to to sin well they recall the verses that they've read that day and they'll resist or someone else opens their mouth really tempted to moan about a colleague perhaps that could be you tomorrow morning really tempted to moan about something that's going on something that's frustrated you and then something you've read that evening well it just stops you your mouth stops and you move on. Well, we should expect that as we're reading and learning scripture. The Bible brings real change to our lives, and so we are to expect transformation. Well, that's it in terms of the, the, um, the, the vitamins. Let me do, do a little test um, with you. So K, 
Vitamin K? Very, very good, very good. I had a low expectation of you, but thank you. Um, keep going. Vitamin B? Breath. Vitamin D? Depth. Vitamin C? Commit to memory. And vitamin A? Action. Very good. Very, very impressed. Um, he, he says patronizingly. <laughs> um, I, I, as we close, I, I, I want to turn to, to the New Testament and indeed to uh, Luke chapter 24. You're very welcome to, to turn to it, um, but I'm going to just go through it quite quickly. Jesus had just died um, days before, uh, but his, his, his burial tomb has, has been found empty. The story zooms in on two men who had followed Jesus. They were on their, their, their they were on a path. They're walking to the to the local town. They were they were mesmerized. They were struck. What has gone on? They're talking about the events that have just happened over over the past few days. And then who joins them? But the resurrected Jesus, right beside them, joins them in their walk. But they don't recognize him. They think he's a stranger. And Jesus does something remarkable for them as he walks along. We find it out in Luke twenty four. He carefully goes through the Old Testament scriptures, which they're all very, the, the, the two disciples were very well versed. They had been doing their learning and their reading to know the scriptures. And he carefully walks through those scriptures with these two men. And he explains that the whole purpose of all of those stories was to point to him. That's why we read the Old Testament. That's why we read the New Testament, because every single word of scripture points to who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And he's skipping on to, to the end of, end of the story. They suddenly realize that the, who they're sharing company with. It was quite a shock um, uh, uh, to them. And then they reflect on what has just happened as Jesus walked on the path. They do, he do, they do that in verse 32. This is what they say. They ask each other, where are hearts, where not our hearts burning? Were they not burning with us while he within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us so very finally this is our final vitamin the vitamin of true belief you could call it b b12 uh, the vitamin of true belief the reason why one reads scriptures why does one read scriptures it is because you come to understand the person and nature of jesus christ and when you come to know the person and nature of Jesus Christ, what he's done, who he is, how much you're loved, your heart will burn. Your heart will burn with joy. He died. He rose again. He will return to judge. He will return to look upon everyone, what the relationship was, what your relationship is to Jesus Christ. And there isn't a page of the Old Testament, there isn't a page of the New Testament that doesn't involve him. And so when you read it, you read it to know him. We were on holidays a few weeks ago. I'm, I'm, also, I'm, I'm always amazed by the, the amount of um, the, 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 the celebrity gossip magazines, actually how many different countries have pretty much the same thing, but their own, uh, their own version. And they're, they're scattered, uh, as you will know, over, over this uh, sort of spread over, over the, the side of the sofa with people people reading them, French, Dutch, English, so many different, trendy, talented people to follow and to be like. And so as one reads these, these magazines, well, they're absorbed, aren't they? They're absorbed into this world. They want to be a little bit. Well, maybe they don't even want to be like the person, but they find their world fascinating. They're involved in it. They, they involve themselves in somebody else's world. We live in the world, don't we, of, of, of influencers. It's never really been any different, but now they've got the title, influencers. And we often are the influence, we, and the influence start to become like them. Their, their lifestyles start to become very like the ones that uh, they read on the magazines. Their, their worldview starts to become very similar. Their fashion sense, their values all become very similar to those that they've absorbed They've, they've, they've come, been absorbed into this world. Well, one chooses to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's what happens. We are absorbed into who he is. We're absorbed, we're fascinated by his world. And we may not see it in day one or day two, but we become like him. The more interested we are in him, the majestic Jesus who walked this earth. It's no abstract idea. He's a real person who walked this earth and he brought happiness and he brought hope on 
every path he walked. And so when you choose to get to know him, well, you're spending company with the greatest of friends. If you're the type of person who is nervous about people getting to know people, perhaps people have let you down in your past. Perhaps you've been hurt too many times to let anyone in. You're skeptical of getting to know people. You're nervous. Well, this Jesus is a person who will never disappoint you. He has no dark secrets. He doesn't smile and try and get to know you and then suddenly you realize who he really is. And he's very upfront with it. The scriptures are very upfront with who he is and he never lets you down. He will never disappoint. There are no bad days where he'll reject you. You try and you, you, knock, you knock on the door, try to get to know him and say, well, not today, thank you. I'm feeling a bit, I feel a, feel a bit down myself. No, that's not who he is. He's always there for us. There's no days when he's tired and he'd prefer you to keep your distance. And so just like David was able to say to Solomon, look him in the eye, boy, this is how you succeed. This is how Israel will succeed. Seek him. Seek him and he will let you find him. He wants to be found. Seek him and you will find him. And so read scripture for what it is worth. And you will say in happiness, you'll say along with this psalmist, I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Let's pray together. Just spend a moment uh, indeed pondering in reflection. And then I will read the verses again. We will read it as a prayer. How can a young man keep his way pure? How can a young man, a young lady, keep his, her way pure? How can an older person keep their way pure? How can each of us keep their way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.